Latios and Tapu Koko. He focuses on those Pokemon to get some early spreads down and uh, get himself in a pretty good position. It's something that obviously we have not seen so far today, but with a record good enough to get him here, clearly it has been working for him so far. Quite a few supporters in the prize cards right there for uh, Matt, Dustin. Or for Dustin. Yeah, Dustin uh, he's going to be down two Sycamores, a Max Elixir, which is a one way for him to accelerate energy onto the board. He's going to have to rely on the other three, and we are underway. Dustin starting off with that ideal Pokemon there, Tapu Koko, and gets to go first. Catch DCE starts spreading with Flying Flip right out the gate. He should be well on the way to executing his game plan. 10, 2, and 1 for both of these players. I believe you said that puts them right around 30 match points. Uh, 10, 10, 2, 1 is 31. 31 so, match um, points. okay. Yeah, they're trying to win the next two. 37 should be pretty, pretty nice. That should be pretty much a guaranteed into the top eight, although we are still not exactly positive on what that points threshold will be. But on the other side from Matthew Padgett, we have that Inge in the active. This is a really straightforward, hyper fast acceleration Malamar build. You want to get as many Malamar up on the bench as possible, dump a bunch of psychic energy into the discard, psychic recharge them, ideally onto a Necrozma GX on your bench, and then you're going to be hitting for 190 minimum if you've got those three psychic energy attached. Yep, on the other side, we're going to see Dustin seeing, doing a very similar strategy, just maybe not as many energy in the discard pile. He only wants to get a few in there to use Oblivion Wing and uh, get some energies accelerated onto the board that way. And wow, look at this. Just every attacker uh, that Dustin has is pretty good against Malamar. He's got Mewtwo, which is a great answer to any Pokemon with extra energies on it. Latios is a great way to knock out Inke on the second turn. Tapu Koko sets up uh, Evital Break, and Evital with the energy, he's ready for Oblivion Wing. So, so many ways that Dustin could attack this game here. And for Matthew, he is really looking to execute those one-hit knockouts. Necrozma GX can hit for 190, 220, such high damage thresholds depending on the energy you have on it that ideally he's hoping to go up against big GX attackers, take out three Pokemon, win the game that way. But Dustin's only hitting with one prize attacker, so this is going to take Matthew quite a while to get the necessary prize cards he needs to win the game. And the longer it takes him, that means the more energy he's going to have to accelerate. So if Dustin can maybe counter down some of those mail early on it's going to be really difficult for Matthew to attack yeah uh, Dustin already showed the Hoopa which is a great way for him to force um, Matthew to have to start using uh, non GX attackers and if you get those out of the way then you can find yourself in pretty advantageous uh, prize swaps oh wow the Latios has the double colorless already so Inke is not going to be long for this world no it will not be in that Tapu Coco of course a free retreater, always nice to have that. Starting in the active, you can just bring it back out and promote whatever you would like. And here it's looking like that Latios is going to be moving on up. And we do have the Instruct or Anguru on the bench as well. Not as powerful as, you know, an Abyssal Hand Octillery, but much more flexible. You can put it in just about anything. Yep, we see uh, Dustin has that Evil Tall break already so can already start thinking about who is the most important to put 30 damage on in case a pretty great spot even if it evolves into malamar it only has 90 hit points so you can definitely work your way into knocking that out uh, through some some of the spread damage no weakness and resistance on the bench but the active inke will be knocked out so dustin taking a pretty early prize card here more importantly trying to limit the resources that matthew has available to him yeah, this knockout on the Inke the turn means that there's only one potential Malamar, so Max Elixir is the only way that uh, Matthew's going to be able to get a relevant knock, um, attack off this turn. And uh, it, it seems pretty unlikely for him to get anything going too much. He, pr he probably is going to end up passing with that Mewtwo in the active spot. Going to be an Ultra Ball dump some of the energy into the discard pile. Very important. Uh, Matthew not really going to be going in hard with this Dawn Wings Necrozma this game. Usually you want to get a float stone onto your Dawn Wings Necrozma. You can invasion it into the active spot. Psychic recharge all of the energy onto whatever Pokemon you want to get the knockout with and then retreat that Dawn Wings and bring up your attacker. But 
he needs the ability to accelerate that energy in the first place before he can get that dawn wings down and actually start taking those knockouts yeah and the uh, the weakness uh, dark weakness is actually pretty terrible for him playing against evil tall break so uh, he may just avoid playing that down uh, for the remainder of the game there's the first evil tall break second dark energy has been attached and goose laying up that Malamar that will be a knockout because of the 30 damage that was spread onto it earlier. This is just such an incredible start for Dustin and an additional 30 damage on the Inke on the bench. So if Matthew does have a Malamar to evolve that, if Dustin has another Guzma, it's going to be getting that third knockout. Yeah, he's just going to keep a uh, rinse cycle repeating over here. And the only answer right now that Matthew has is lose all of his energies that he's built up. And that's not a pretty good answer. <laughs> Definitely going to be looking for another Inke here. He, he needs to try to stick multiple Malamar uh, to the board, and he hasn't been able to disrupt anything that Dustin has in his hand, so if Dustin's been holding on to some supporter cards, he'll be able to just keep using those over and over. Looks like four energy and two more Guzma in Dustin's hand, so he doesn't actually have any draw supporters right now. Um, but he has all of the Pokemon set up that he needs to be set up. Yeah. And he has the ability to snipe down those all-important Malamar. So even though he doesn't have those draw supporters, doesn't necessarily need them right now. But this Necrozma GX is going to get the knockout on the Latios. All three energy are discarded. And at this point, Matthew would kind of have his cycle going. He would be able to retreat that Necrozma, Psychic Recharge onto it because of the Dawn Wings with the Float Stone on the bench. Doesn't have the Malamar, however. We're going to see how greedy Dustin is here. He's If he does have that Guzman you were talking about, he has the option right now to either take out the Malamar or the Dawn Wings, and he's going after it right now. Baleful Knight does 120, but with the dark weakness on that Dawn Wings Necrozma, that's going to be 240 and 30 damage to everything on the bench that already has damage counters on it. Also perfectly executed by Dustin to play the Parallel City after the Guzma. You pull up that Dawn Wings Necrozma so that uh, Matthew doesn't have the option to discard it with the Parallel City. Then you make him have to make a decision, and he actually has to decide to keep a Malamar with damage on it on board, even though he knows his opponent's at two prize cards left. Get that Parallel City out of there. Matthew needs Malamar, and he needs them now, but he only has... That one more copy of Inke to put down on the bench. This is just going so, so fast. I, I think the only way this, this works out for him is multiple max elixirs and uh, a really well-timed N. It, it's going to be hard for him. He also needs a float stone if he wants to get an attack off here. He's, he's actually just in a lot of trouble because mm -hmm. Dustin also has that uh, Oranguru down so he can start to draw up some cards again get his hand back up to three so many of the cards that he has are live as soon as he draws them mostly energies and other item cards that help him out i think he picked up a double colorless and a sycamore <laughs> those are good cards if you could pick two cards <laughs> and matthew's just gonna have to pass back doesn't find the float stone for the mewtwo or he Attaches to the Necrozma GX? Yeah, he actually throws the float onto the Necrozma. All right, so maybe a bit of a different game plan. Trying to stall this one out. Dustin does need to take a single GX knockout to win this game, but if Matthew can force him to take a non-GX knockout, then maybe he's got a little bit more time. Looks like Dustin's thinking of potentially drawing one card first. Uh, nope, he's actually just going to go with the seven here. Did have potential to maybe top deck something like uh, a Guzma, and then he could just completely destroy this board. Another parallel city. Man, these are Doesn't tough it? decisions. Yeah. Oh. No, I think that's the right one. He just can't let those prize cards go off the board. You don't want to get rid of the energy on your Mewtwo. You don't want. You, you can't get rid of that Necrozma GX. That's your attacker. But having to ditch the only Malamar he's got on the bench, that's painful. Yep. Now Dustin's just deciding, should he thin his hand down a little more? He's got cards like Ultra Ball, but Ultra Ball's a pretty good card when you're at two prizes. Uh, it, when, you, when you get that with the Orangaroo, uh, you can actually just use that, burn your hand down, and then draw three new cards. So as long as he doesn't take a prize, don't expect him to play anything that doesn't have to. Well, 
which you're balling likely for a Malamar would be my guess. Yep. He's at least got one energy. If he has a Max Elixir and a Psychic Energy in hand, he can manually attach and Psychic Recharge and Max Elixir to the Necrozma GX on the bench. That's a lot to ask. Yeah. He also needs a way to retreat the Mewtwo. Yeah, I'm just looking at the, the list now. I don't even see Max Elixir in the deck. Um, yeah, it would be hard to play Max Elixir <laughs> when he doesn't actually I, I, have it. I just so, assume most lists play it now. He, uh, he actually went with a, an approach that has so many extra attackers that he, he just doesn't have it. And uh, Guzma looks like it's going to set up for the double knockout here. All right, that is going to be game number one. Dustin Zimmerman taking it. Very decisive victory there, just controlling the entire time, the pace of the game, the resources that Matthew was able to utilize, keeping those Malamar off of the bench, and uh, Matthew was just locked. Yeah, I mean, Dustin did everything that he wanted to do. He went first, got an energy onto an evil tall, had every attacker he needed, didn't even have to use Hoopa, but even, even though Hoopa could be a pretty good attacker in this matchup, just went with the simple strategy, found that parallel city, and really put so much pressure on those early Inkes and Malamars that... Matthew never got to really get any attackers out. He maybe got two relevant attacks off that whole mm. game. All right. Well, Matthew's going first this time. If he's able to pull up a Bridget turn one, he's got one in his deck. He can get down a nice couple of Inke on the bench, hopefully yep. get Malamar going for turn two, ditch a couple of energy, and he should be able to get his ball rolling much quicker this time with, with a decent draw at least. Yeah, it really just... Not sure what attacker he wants to go with in this matchup. It's it's difficult to say. Just keep using Mewtwo because it doesn't take too many knockouts. He doesn't want to use these GX attackers because he's losing so many energies every time trading a two for one. Uh, I just don't know where he goes from here. Looks like a mulligan for Matthew. So an extra card over to Dustin's side. Slight bit of an edge there. Two double colorless in the prizes. Yep, that's uh, that's going to be pretty unfortunate for Dustin. That's his main way to, to start putting on aggression is finding a double colorless energy for Latios. All right, Matthew does manage to find a basic Pokemon this time around. Places those prize cards. Okay. Nothing too bad in there. Yeah, you can work with that. Does have two Tapu Lele GX in the deck, so... You know, his chances of finding that turn one Bridget may be a little bit less right now, but nothing detrimental there. Yeah, so it looks like we're going to see Matthew starting off, and he does have that Ultra Ball, so we should be seeing a, a few Inkes in play, but you know, missing one big aspect of with those Psychic Energies, none in hand to start. All right, it's likely going to be that Tapu Lele and Wonder Tag for that Bridget. You can see him pulling both of those cards to the front of his deck, but wanting to cycle through and get a good read on what is in his prize cards. And I think you have to go for the full three Inkes on this. Uh, it's just too risky when you see your opponent starting Latios. All they need is a, a Guzma and a DC, and they can get you in that same position where you only have one Malamar over and over again. You also gave your opponent some extra cards, too, so it's even more likely that Dustin would be able to pull off uh, a, an easy knockout on an Inke. Matthew is going to waver a little bit, though, and pick up a Mewtwo instead of that third Inke. Dustin, we do know, has two double colorless energy in his prize card, so it will be much more difficult for him to power up that Latios early on. And he's going to Ultra Ball away what looks like two Evil Tall Break. Yeah, I think I saw the Super Rod in his hand, so he's he feels comfortable doing this. It's not It's not too bad for him. Uh, the awkward part of his hand is he has two max elixirs and he has a really weird way that he could take a knockout. I don't I don't think he should go for it. It's Tapu Lele for Guzma. Guzma up an Inke. Bring up your Lele. Attach to it. Double max elixir to your Latios and retreat. Uh, but then you have nothing. So. Oh my gosh. Maybe that's a little too risky. And it's very dependent on hitting both of those max elixirs. Yeah. <laughs> you know, granted he's got ten darkness energy in the deck so it's you know a good chance but Whew. Yeah, let's just go for the DC and start doing some damage <laughs> instead. That sounds a little better. You hate to throw back those two max elixirs, though. Yeah, it's they just don't do very much for Tapu Lele, so 
A good eye there and also waits on the super rod. He doesn't need the evil tall breaks just yet. Doesn't want to draw into those. So I actually like that play from him. He knows that he can get a lot of mileage out of these one prize attackers that don't require that break stage. So he can just use the Latios and then maybe find the evil tall break when he needs to clean up some big GX knockouts. Didn't oh. get any basics for the bench. Doesn't look like it. Didn't even find a double colorless, uh, although it was going to be difficult with two in the prizes. All right, so a, a rather weak start for Dustin Zimmerman, Matthew. However, if he can get some Alomar on the bench this turn, this could be exactly what he needs to make a comeback in this match. Yeah, this is exactly what he wants, except no psychic energies yet. He, he's going to be hoping that off of this Sycamore, he's able to find some way to discard those energies and uh, get the ball rolling. He'd like to really get a, a early aggressive start on this Latios. Just make sure that it never puts any damage onto the Malamars and Incas. He's already used a couple Ultra Ball. He does, of course, run four copies of Mysterious Treasure as well. So, yeah, there's one of those. So, he has access to two energies this turn. His two energy attacks are uh, energy drive. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know if he wants to go with that. Oh, he's got Mewtwo. Okay, so um, Mewtwo GX, he's got the, the secondary attack, does 60 damage, and uh, so he can go ahead and go with that. That's a pretty nice way. If he has the Floatstone as well, he'd be able to swap out. The, looks like he has it. Okay. okay. That's, that's pretty solid. Yeah, running two copies of that Mewtwo GX as well as two copies of that Mewtwo promo. A lot of cards that we weren't seeing having really any play up until Malamar was released with Forbidden Light. But frankly, I'm quite happy about it. I have two of the test tube Mewtwo secret rares <laughs> that were just collecting dust, so this is good for me. There we go. Dustin choosing to go aggressive, going to lose a Max Elixir and throw away an N, instead going for seven cards now. Finds Hoopa. Hoopa seems pretty good against GXs, but this one has a GX attack that goes through that. Dustin's just frantically looking through to see what can help him out here. He's probably going to have to go with a, a non-DCE attacker. He's, he already realizes that he's not going to be finding these double colorless. They're just way too difficult to draw into, being the state of his prize cards. Evil Tall is going to be the option. Mm, he did throw away two of those Evil Tall break earlier on. And those are the only two that he is running. So unless he finds the Super Rod, he's not going to have those back in his hand for quite a while. Dustin just going to try to force the GX attack out of uh, Matthew over here. Matthew doesn't have any other energies in the discard pile. It does, has no Dawn Wings to float in and float out. So it's probably going to be Matthew's best option here. Yeah, it's not too bad. Psy Strike GX from Mewtwo GX does 200 damage and is not affected by any effects on the opponent's active Pokemon. So even though Hoopa normally cannot take damage from EX and GX Pokemon, Psy Strike gets right past that. And, you know, th there really aren't, I would say, any other GX attacks that Matthew would want to use. Um, you know, yep. there are no... Black Ray's not going to do too yeah, much. <laughs> no GX and EX Pokemon to deal 100 damage to. And uh, honestly, his best... Uh, GX attack is either this or Tapu Cure. Yeah. Well, the Dawn Wings and Crows was pretty good. That can, yeah, that can come in handy sometimes. But most of the attacks that Matthew's going to be using are, are you know, going to deal enough damage to get knockouts, regardless of whether they're GX attacks or not. Yeah. So getting past that Hoopa, well worth Psy Strike GX. Well, Dustin does find double colorless uh, just at an awkward point. He doesn't have anyone that he wants to attach it to now. If he had the Mewtwo, he would have been able to set up a potential knockout using a choice band. Very, very different situation from that last game. Dustin really feeling the hurt from prizing two of those double colorless, but it looks like he finally did pick one up. He might have to energy drive. It's the only way to get some relevant damage onto the board. Well, it would be 
what, 200 with the double colorless, and that's with the psychic weakness from you too, enough to take the knockout. He also has the option to just promote Hoopa and uh, hang out for a little bit. He could attach to the Hoopa as well if he wanted to. Uh, he doesn't have to worry about a GX attack happening. He's already seen the, the, mar the marker flipped over. And it's pretty difficult for Matthew to find a way to attack with the other Mewtwo. There's no other psychic energies in the discard that I'm aware of. Yeah, even with two Malamar on the bench, there really haven't been many energy discarded for Matthew this game because he's gone in on the Mewtwo GX. Looks like he's got two in hand and a Sycamore, which, well, that'll put energy in your discard. Yeah, it's surprising to see him not use the uh, Mysterious Treasure before that. He could just check his deck, see what he's working with, and maybe throw away some Pokemon that he wasn't going to be able to use the, in the game. That's a good point. Thin the deck a little bit. This isn't going to be a, a fatigue scenario. Well, here comes Mewtwo. It does something. <laughs> just... Not enough. Well, at least he does have those non-EX and GX attackers to get through Hoopa the hard way. No Acerola is in the deck for Dustin. So no way to heal up that damage. We'll just have to retreat the Hoopa. Yeah, this is this is a difficult spot for, for Dustin. He's going to need to find uh, Floatstone, Mewtwo DCE, if he wanted to remove this Mewtwo off of the board. Uh, he's got a Ranguru so that he could draw a few more cards if he's able to play out a lot in his hands, but mm -hmm. it just has to work out the right way, and it just hasn't uh, off of the last few supporters he's drawn. Looks to be the same story here. All right, Death Dark to the Evil Tall on the bench. And that DCE still in hand, but he's just going to pass back again, try and buy some time. Yep, just really doesn't have any way to to get out of this. He's going to let the Mewtwo hit him. And if Dustin doesn't have an answer in the next few turns, I would really suggest that he scoops and just plays a nice game three. Mm. He knows that if he plays this matchup the way he wants to, he's he definitely uh, can win the game. It's just he needs a little bit of time so that he can execute it, maybe... 12 minutes uh, for a, a nice game for him. So as long as he doesn't play this game out way too long in a disadvantaged uh, position, then he should be okay. Yeah, you of course have to be cognizant of of the clock. But that first game did go by rather quickly, so I'm sure he's still feeling pretty secure that he can play this one out for a little bit longer, maybe go for some of those um, low percentage chances that he's able to turn this one around. But if it's going south, he'll scoop and go to game three. It does look like with a powered up Necrozma GX on the bench, the Mewtwo in the active, and two Malamar that have yet to be touched in any way, uh, it looks like this one's going in favor of Matthew. Yeah, I mean, th this end is probably going to be the key. Uh, if if this one is finally able to lock out Matthew, he has a full bench. He already's played Tapu Lele. He's played a few supporters. So if this actually ends in a drought and he doesn't find carts like Guzma to knock out that Tapu Lele uh, for a potential winner in the following turns, uh, then I don't see uh, Dustin continuing to play the game out. Oh, there's the Mewtwo and the DCE. He has Max Elixir, so he can start to work on the other Evil Tall if he wants to get a second energy there. He did shuffle in the break as well, so uh, he could get that ready to go. Looks like he already attached to uh, mm. the Evil Tall, so good spot by Matthew. Important to... I don't want to say police your opponent, but make sure that the rules are being followed. Yeah, monitor. Yeah. <laughs> Keep an eye on. That's the nice way to put it. So off the max elixir, Dustin is able to find another energy and get that onto an evil tall. He's finally starting to, to execute some of his game plan, to, to get something going. But the question is, is it just too late? Does Matthew have too many powered-up Pokemon? He's had so much time to Psychic Recharge onto that Necrozma GX and the Mewtwo on the bench that 
it, it just seems really unlikely that even if Dustin finds himself in a situation of parity, Matthew is so far ahead on prize cards that he's just going to be able to take this one. Well, this hand is awful. This is the scenario where, where Dustin stays in the game. There's not much going on here um, over on Matthew's side. And really, we're just uh, a, a few turns away. If uh, Dustin is able to find a parallel city, he could really uh, make this awkward for Matthew. That's a good point. Limit the bench size. If Dustin can force Matthew to go down to just one Malamar. Now things get a little bit better for him. Yep, he, he has the energy if he wants to work on the Mewtwo or the Evil Tall Break. Decides to go with the Mewtwo here. He has Ultra Ball as well, so if he wants to go uh, for Tapu Lele and for a card like Guzma, he can do that. But it looks like he uh, wants to go with the Evil Tall Break, give himself a little extra hit points, and uh, then play a Sycamore here and try to find that Parallel City. Oh, he's actually played his hand out so the Orangaroo can help him out. That's a... Well, smart. Pretty risky, though. I guess he, he just really wants to find uh, a different supporter. Yeah, that's fair. He does have a, a pretty dense set of supporters, 4N, 4 Sycamore, 3 Cynthia, so a lot of draw options. Yeah. And uh, he found the one he was looking for. He found Guzma, so he's able to remove three more energies off of the board. There you go. And he does have a Cynthia in hand as well for next turn, so... Smooth sailing now that Dustin's managed to get past uh, the rocky early start. Matthew still needs to take two prizes. Dustin's got that Tapu Lele GX on the bench, however. I think we're just a psychic energy away. If, yeah, that might actually be it. Because um, he can Ultra Ball for Tapu Lele uh, attached to the um, the Dawn, uh, the other Necrozma mm -hmm. and uh, Prismatic the Lele. Yeah. So let's see if he's got the Tapu Lele here. Yeah, he eyes it up immediately. Found the Guzma. Wonder tag for the Guzma. Bring up the only GX Pokemon in the deck for Dustin Zimmerman. And, uh, yeah, Dustin's going to go ahead and scoop it up here. And looks like we're moving on to game three. Yes. All right, 1-1. One, one. Game number three. Potentially a top eight qualification on the line here for these guys. Winner goes to an 11, 2, and 1 match record. Ends up at 34 match points after this round, but I believe they're going to need at least one more draw at that point. 35 potentially the sweet spot, but yep. still a, a bit of a question mark there. Yeah, 35, it could get dangerous. It really just depends on tie percentages. When you have 1,500 players, you need a lot of points to make it to the last eight spots. So um, both these players were definitely eyeing up wins and then trying to at least tie or win in the following rounds. A um, little hope for both players, though. Matthew was able to see that if he draws into the right cards, gets some psychic energy in the discard pile, he definitely has a way to win against this deck. Dustin saw game one, how easy it is for him to win this game if he draws into the right stuff. And he almost started to make a comeback in game two after pretty terrible draws and some pretty lame prizes for him. Well, hopefully the prizes work a little bit more in his favor this time around. Only four DCE in the deck, and he did prize two of them in the previous game. Looks like nothing too terrible prize there. And four, four darkness energy. energy out of ten in the deck. <laughs> that's oh. a bit rough. Yeah, that's a that's not good. Uh, you do need three darkness energy on an evil tall break to attack. <laughs> he might not be able to get there with uh, with Evil Tall Break. Especially when you're relying very heavily on the four Max Elixir in your deck. Uh, that's a little sketchy. That's true. But he does have all four DCE this time around, so perhaps an early Latios sniping off some of those Inke on the bench from Matthew could get there, and, and you know, very importantly, Dustin is going first this game. No, that's right. He also... Started his best Pokemon, that Tapu Koko. It's got free retreat. It also is very good against uh, decks that like to fill their bench early. You just use that flying flip, get a bunch of damage onto the board, and uh, that just sets up for all of his Pokemon to get some pretty sweet knockouts. Latios spreading 30 is able to do a pretty good amount of work, along with Evital Break to clean up at the end. Does get that powered up Latios on the bench. Cynthia for a fresh six.
Well, he, he found a few cards he could play, just doesn't really want to play them yet. Double Max Elixir, and the only Pokemon he could give those two are uh, the Orangaroo, because Latios doesn't really want those Dark Energies. All right, an early Ultra Ball from Matthew, and with that Cynthia in hand, this is probably going to be a Wonder Tag for Bridget and uh, a couple Inke on the bench. Yeah, it seems to be what he's looking for. Just needs to stick Inke so that he can find Malamars later in the game. Also, finding that Psychic Energy for the discard pile is going to be pretty great for him. It means that he is a oh. potential option of getting some attacks off in the second turn. Okay, so wants to play Cynthia this turn. Going to forego that Lele and just get that second Inke. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's, it's interesting. He could just play out the Lele and, and use Bridget, but maybe maybe he's got a little information that we don't have. Maybe he's just unhappy with the rest of his hand. He didn't have another psychic energy to attach if he ultra balled away the psychic energy that was in his hand initially. Yeah, that's true. This uh, allows him to get a little more aggressive. Also holding the float stone and the mysterious treasure for the following turn, so... He definitely could uh, get a Super Cybolt off with this Mewtwo uh, in the coming turns against Latios, which is pretty much what he's trying to do. He just needs to have an answer to Latios uh, once it starts working on the Inkes. Still no target for Dustin to really want to max Elixir to. He has another DCE in hand, but no Eveltal as of yet. Going to attach to Uranguru. It does have Psychic. Um, which which is a pretty powerful attack. Yeah, it, it's it's managed to do a little bit of work for for some players in the in the past. But uh, looks like he's just gonna play a few cards out. Doesn't want to use those max elixirs just yet. Wants to find evil tolls for those. It's unfortunate that he hasn't been able to see that yet. And no Guzma. So this means that if Ladios attacks, it's it's not taking a knockout here. All right, finally finding that evil tall. But uh, now the Max Elixir is no longer in hand. Also found a Dark Energy, one of the one of the few. It's, it's also sitting there for him. Wants to see the discard pile. Uh, just checking on the amount of Psychic Energies mainly. And uh, now he's got to make the decision of if you pass or Latios. He's just going to pass the turn here. It's not worth attacking into that Mewtwo. It also has that pressure ability. So the damage would be reduced, and uh, only 30 on the ink eight doesn't seem worth it. He could just get um, attached, floatstone, Malamar, and uh, Mewtwo would knock out his Latios. Field blower away the choice band, and there the Necrozma enters the board. Two Malamar and a couple of energy in the discard means this will be a powered up Necrozma GX pretty quickly. Yeah, this is a pretty solid second turn, if you ask me. I'd, I'd definitely prefer to be a Malamar player in this spot. He's got pretty much everything he wants to work with, just trying to find Floatstone, maybe another way to get an energy into the discard pile for himself, and he's in a pretty favorable spot. Important to note, this is not always how Malamar turn twos look. Yeah. <laughs> the deck can be a bit inconsistent. This is an ideal scenario. This definitely doesn't work for me like that. <laughs> Yeah, but when you get it, it's pretty sweet. All right, finding that Mewtwo GX, of course. Uh, its GX attack can get through that Hoopa we saw last game, so wanting to have that just in case. We are in the spot where Parallel City would be pretty detrimental as well, so look for that card as a, a signature move on Dustin's side. Two energies for the Mewtwo. Is there a float stone? I don't think we see that yet. So just gonna have to pass the turn. Dustin does have that Guzma in his hand. He can start to work on some Pokemon if he wants to. Uh, just has to pick which one he wants to attack into. Could start to work on Malamar forces. Uh, Matthew to have a card like Guzma or Floatstone to, to get out of the echo spot. 
We saw I didn't attach Floatstone to the Mewtwo last turn, so probably doesn't have it. Also could land some pretty big damage. He has a choice band in his hand. Okay, then that's gonna be 120 onto the active Necrozma. And 30 onto a benched Malamar. If he's able to pull that Malamar up, uh, then he's gonna have the knockout on that with the weakness. Yep, pretty solid turn all around for, for Dustin there. Hmm. Not sure which way this one's gonna go, actually. Yeah, this is this is tough. Because Matthew's pretty much done everything that he needs to do. It's pretty much just dependent on if Dustin draws into the right cards in the following few turns. Mm -hmm. yeah, he, he has all of his attackers ready. He's not at any point going to lose both Malamars with this current setup. That's one way that this, this matchup can start to, to flip around. Getting the Super Cybolt knockout onto that Latios, though, that's, that's a pretty big deal. Puts Matthew at that slightly awkward five prize card spot, but less awkward knowing there's only a single copy of Tapu Lele GX as a two prize Pokemon in the deck for Dustin. So he was going to have to knock out quite a few Pokemon anyway. Yeah, Psychic right now is hitting for 120, but then reduced by pressure. So only 100 damage. Uh, so Dustin instead is going to pull that energy back and try to find a different attacker. Mewtwo DCE would be able to handle this Mewtwo. And we'll just see what he what he ends up going with here. Really just depends on the Cynthia draw. He's been pretty uh, dependent on his draws. Uh, hasn't been able to stick too much to the board uh, over the last two games. Nah, he's always been chasing something. Hasn't had just that perfect setup yet. He does oh. find the Psychic and the Ultra Ball. That's going to be able to fetch that Evolution's Mewtwo and the DC, or the DCE, not the Psychic, excuse me, um, to attach the Mewtwo. We'll get him the knockout. Yep. Also, uh, love the ordering here. He's going to use the Ultra Ball and grab the Pokemon first, then use his Max Elixir, thins out by a card, so doesn't have to worry about drawing into that Mewtwo off of the, the Max Elixir. Could potentially be that energy, and we know he doesn't have too many. He's counting right now and saying, oh boy, I actually don't have very good odds of hitting this Max Elixir, but <sighs> probably going to have to try. It's uh, not a great surprise, but he'll work with it. Still a decent shot here. Oh, there it goes. So that worked out pretty well for him. Not sure if he's used his uh, Oranguru ability yet, but could bring his hand back up. All right, he's going to instruct for two. Finds another Max Elixir. And another Mewtwo. Can he hit two in a row? <laughs> oh, he does. It's like he never even prized four. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. Yeah, I would definitely bench this other Mewtwo. It's a very nice threat to stick onto the board. And, uh, he's going to take the knockout here. All right, promote the Necrozma GX with the Float Stone and then figure out exactly what the game plan is here. Looks like the answer is go find a Psychic Energy. <laughs> He's going to throw away all of those GX Pokemon, just doesn't want to work with them. Knows his best answer here is probably to just use his, uh, his little Mewtwo and attack right back in. Make Dustin have to have that double colorless energy. Tossing a Guzma as well. Could have isolated that Evil Tall, but doesn't have the necessary psychic energy to actually knock it out. All right, able to get the full value from Psychic Recharge this turn. And we're going to see the Super Cybolt knockout onto the Evolution's Mewtwo. All right, so Tapu Koko, the ideal Pokemon to bring up. That free retreat, of course, is going to give him all the options that he needs. Dustin's going to try to find a little bit of information. He sees one Psychic Energy in the discard pile. So maybe that might uh, have him attack somewhere else he, if, he did, if he isn't able to score the knockout here because he doesn't have to worry about any other attackers coming into play. Uh, if it involves retreating and then Guzmin, that's, it just gets really awkward for, mm -hmm. for Matthew to get value out of recharge. Right, and.
So with Oranguru going up uh, to use Psychic, he could get the Mewtwo to 100. Uh, that sets up for some potential knockouts with uh, Evil Tall Break if the Mewtwo were to be in the uh, on the bench. Don't have to worry about that pressure ability then. No, might just be playing a, a longer game here. Yeah, looks like it. Unfortunate though is that Oranguru is the only real way he has to draw cards. So if he starts using it as his attacker, uh, he might be in a little bit of trouble. Only a couple darkness energy left in the deck and Dustin does miss on that max elixir. Yeah, that means that attacking with uh, Evil Tall just gets a little more awkward for him. Looks like he's got two in hand. So yeah, he's gonna go with this uh, Oranguru. Softening up the Mewtwo, setting up for a knockout on the next turn. And everything that Matthew has is actually pretty within reach now of the damage that Dustin can do. Yeah. It's going to take some manipulating the board state, but he's done a lot of work so far. Matthew has that one psychic energy, has Ultra Ball, so he could go for Tapu Lele if he needs to find a supporter uh, to take knockouts here. I think that's what he has to end up doing. Uh, this retreat and then potentially using a Guzma mm -hmm. could score him a knockout. Just maybe wants to go after that Evil Tall. Maybe he wants to take out that Mewtwo because he's had a lot of trouble with Mewtwo's. Certainly keeping track of the double colorless energy that have been used this game. And what a relief for, for Dustin this is if his uh, Oranguru is not going to get knocked out because I think he needs it if he's going to stay alive in this game. He needs to draw more cards to get him out of his hands because it's not going anywhere right now. Okay, it is going to be the Evil Tall with the energy on it that Matthew will target down. Still keeping plenty of energy in his discard to use Psychic Recharge every turn, but now this Necrozma GX is it's pretty fragile. Um, definitely yeah. there's an opening for Dustin to take some prizes here. Unfortunately, he drew into another Pokemon, so the most cards he can draw is one. He'd have to play down all those Pokemon as well. Does have the Hoopa in hand, but with Matthew still having his GX attack available and that Mewtwo GX on board, that Hoopa is not quite so scary. Oh, he finds a dark energy. Mm. Well, Psychic uh, attacking into the uh, the Necrozma is actually not going to work because it has an ability that stops its attacks from colorless Pokemon. Lights and, oh my goodness, you forget about that, don't you? Yeah, he, uh, he just attacked <laughs> in thinking that he'd get the knockout, but actually there were no oh potential knockouts for him. Oh, and that's huge. That's that, a big deal. Now, if Matthew just has one psychic energy, he can knock out the Saranguru. Yeah, the, the only relevant attackers that I've seen this come into play with have been uh, Drampa mm -hmm. attacking into this card, trying to score a big knockout. But yeah, uh, Aranguru is a card you got to think about too, and Dustin just missed it. Yeah, and usually Drampa was paired with Garb, mm -hmm. and Garb would, would shut down Light's End. So right. that, that's the first time I've actually seen that be really detrimental. Dustin oh, just promoted man. his Orangru, did nothing with it, and now lost his consistent draw resource. Well, he did find a Sycamore, so he's still in this game. He's going to attach to the Evil Tall. This is just going to be a little slow, though. He's just only doing 30 damage uh, It's towards his energy acceleration as well. So much damage on that side of Matthew's board, but he just can't clean up. And this Parallel City could just remove the prize cards for, for him. Yeah, he... Oh. Matthew says, thanks. <laughs> I can get rid of this thing. It's a, It's got like 300 damage. Fine by him. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I understand where Dustin's coming from, though. If, if you don't have to worry about those attackers for the rest of the game, that helps. But you lose so many attacks. You've still got a Tapu Lele with three energy on it and a Mewtwo GX that will be ready to attack with just a single Psychic Energy from hand every turn going forward. Yep. Field Blower would be a very nice card for Matthew here if you're able to remove that Parallel City. 
give himself a little more bench space. He does have that rescue stretcher in hand, so if he wanted to pull some of these Pokemon back into his deck, he has that option too. Guzma is going to be able to target down a Pokemon. He wants to choose that Evil Tall with two energies. Now we're going to decide if he wants to load up the energies onto a Mewtwo or, I mean, he could go for a big energy drive. He's counting it up. Oh, he, <laughs> That's a big attack. What, could he put uh, five, three that's energy enough. onto the Lele this turn with two psychic recharge and the energy from hand? But it, yeah, do the exact math, finds out it's one more than he needed, so he gets to attach the Mewtwo GX on the bench as well. And now Matthew down to just one prize card remaining. Dustin, his back's against the wall here. Is there anything that he can do to get him out of this horrible situation? Well, right now, the only attacker that could potentially knock out this Lele and not have him knocked out, he'd have to have a, a, uh, a field blower to take away that float stone on the Malamar and maybe attack with a top of Lele of his own. He could do energy drive with a DCE for 140 damage. And if he paired that with an N, he'd be in a pretty reasonable spot. Just that Mewtwo. I could see a world where Matthew maybe attaches those energies to Mewtwo and passes, and then Dustin takes advantage of that with his Mewtwo, but it's a lot to ask for. <laughs> I think it all starts with this Tapu Lele, though. He just needs... Oh, gosh, I don't even know what he needs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he needs so much. So if he uses the... Okay, he's going to use the Guzma and go after the Mewtwo. All right. The Mewtwo can't take energies if it is in the active spot, so uh -huh. that's a strategy. It is... Evil Tall Break has 150 hit points. The Mewtwo only needs one energy to attack. It just gains more damage the more energy it has attached to it. So it looks like he's going to use Oblivion Wing here. 30 damage and an energy from the discard. Maybe that's all of Matthew's energies right now in play. Mm. Yeah, because he would need three to use Baleful Knight, but uh, I believe with the Oblivion Wing, you have to attach to the bench. Oh, he has one energy there. Yeah, he's got to use that to the bench. Mm -hmm. So no blower yet. I think that's the key right now to him winning the game. He need to get rid of that Parallel City so that he can find the Guzman for the win. I like that he's now thinning out. He's going to get that Inke into his hand so that he can potentially throw it away with the uh, the Sycamore. Throw it away right now if he wants. Yep, just rinse and repeat. Get closer to the game-winning cards in the deck. Yeah, he's just going to use that Sycamore and uh, try to push. One Psychic, two Psychic energies. And a Float Stone, I believe. So he's counting up right now. He's got five on board, six if he attacks 120. He just attaches here, uh, uses Recharge, and then Float Stone's out. That's going to be the game. The game. What a comeback for Matthew Paget going down to a 0-1 deficit, but manages to get two consecutive wins within time. That was a pretty cool series. Yeah, I mean, we got to see a little bit of everything. Dustin's deck.